state of Missouri is an excellent place for uh, catching blue cats. They've got a number of reservoirs that have blue cats in it. We got the Missouri River here, the Mississippi River on the other side of the state. Um, excellent, excellent blue cat fishing in this state. The bigger fish, I think, should be preserved. You have to properly handle them or uh, they won't survive. Missouri is a great place to fish. Many anglers prefer to do CPR, catch, photograph, and release. Learning the best ways to catch, handle, hold, and release catfish will reduce stress and increase survival of released fish. Fishing for catfish for both recreation and for table fare has always been a popular pastime in the state. But in the last 10 years or so, there's been a big increase in interest for catfishing from the catch and release aspect. This has taken place uh, not only among the tournament group, but among anglers that just want to go out, catch a big catfish, take a picture of it, and let it go. Catfish are a very long-lived species. Blue and flathead catfish can live up to 20 to 30 years and grow to very large sizes. In Missouri in 2010, both state records for those fish were broken. So it's very important that if we're gonna handle and release these fish live, that we use proper techniques to do that. Today we'll be talking about techniques where people can properly handle fish and release them safely so they'll be able to catch them in the future. To get started, only use tackle that will help you quickly land the fish. Use rods and line that are heavy enough to land catfish quickly. Don't play a fish any longer than necessary. The more exhausted a fish gets, the longer it takes to recover, reducing its chance of survival. Use circle hooks whenever possible. These are much less likely to be swallowed by a fish than straight shank hooks. During the summer, do not fish set lines at depths below the thermocline, where there is very little oxygen. Lines fished deeper than this can potentially kill any fish you catch before you have a chance to retrieve them. Check your gear at regular intervals, at least once every 24 hours as prescribed by law. The more often you check, the better the survival of fish you release. This also gives you a chance to rebate your gear, which could result in catching more fish. Keep the fish in the water as much as possible and wet at all times. Keep the time the fish is exposed to air to an absolute minimum. Avoid contact with the fish's gills. Wet hands before handling fish and wet down any surfaces the fish may come into contact with. Contact between the fish and dry surfaces can damage the slime coat, resulting in infection and poor survival. Remove hooks carefully to minimize injury. Use pliers to remove the hook and to prevent hooking yourself should the fish move suddenly. If a fish is hooked deep in the throat, cut the line and leave the hook in the fish. Use landing nets large enough to safely handle big catfish. Support the fish's body weight by holding it horizontally rather than lifting it by the mouth. And of course, be careful of the spines while handling. Release fish carefully by placing them gently back into the water. Keep in mind that the less stress a fish experiences while being caught and handled, the better its chance of survival. By following the guidelines in this video, you can help ensure that the fish you release will survive to grow larger and be caught another day, maybe by you. Your live well is a life support system for your fish, and maintaining water quality is critical to their survival after release. The warmer the water, the more oxygen fish require to remain healthy. However, Warm water holds less dissolved oxygen than cool water. Use continuous aeration. Without this, a heavy catch of fish can deplete oxygen in a live well within minutes. At water temperatures between 65 and 75 degrees, run your live well aeration system on continuous fresh water mode. At water temperatures above 75 degrees, run your aeration system in continuous recirculation mode. Keep your live well about 5 to 10 degrees lower than the lake temperature. You can control the temperature by adding ice to your live well. By doing this, your fish will need less oxygen and the water in your live well will hold more oxygen. Never allow your live well temperature to exceed 85 degrees. 
Crack open the lid to your live well to keep the airspace above the water from becoming stagnant. Add one third cup of non-iodized salt to your live well for every five gallons of water to produce a 0.5% salt concentration. This will reduce stress and aid in survival after release. Fish produce ammonia, which can become toxic in a live well. To prevent this, replace one half of the water in your live well with fresh water every two hours after the first fish is placed there. After adding fresh water, return the water in your live well to the proper temperature and re-establish a 0.5% salt concentration. Do not use hydrogen peroxide in your live well as it can severely damage a fish's gills. Do not place fish you intend to release on a stringer. The success of any regulation requiring the release of fish depends upon the survival of those fish. With that in mind, remember the following take-home points. 1. On rod and reel, don't play a fish any longer than necessary and check set lines frequently to improve survival of released fish. 2. Use a landing net large enough to safely handle a big catfish. 3. Wet your hands and any other surface a fish may come into contact with. 4. Hold large fish by the lower jaw with one hand and support the body with the other. 5. On a deep hooked fish, cut the line and leave the hook in the fish. 6. Minimize the amount of time a fish is exposed to the air. 7. Always maintain proper live well conditions, dissolved oxygen, temperature, salt concentration, and ammonia. And 8. In the summer, keep set lines positioned above the thermocline. We have a five fish limit. All fish must be alive to weigh in. We only weigh in blue catfish, channel catfish, and flathead catfish. Can only catch fish on rod and reel. No fish from jug lines, trout lines, limb lines. No hand fishing. You can use any commercial or legal live or cut bait. We have 38 boats here today. It's our best turnout we've ever had. So when we do our weigh in, get your boats out of the water. Let's not have 20 people in line at the same time waiting to weigh fish. Let's keep the weigh in line short. Leave your fish in, your live well aerators on so we keep them nice and healthy. Let's be real nice to the fish. Tournament organizers and anglers share the same goal, to maximize fish survival. For tournaments, here are some tips to promote the survival of released fish. A good way in sight will be close to angler boat mooring and or the parking lot, close to a good release site with relatively cool, clear, deep water, shaded for anglers and life support tanks, and corded off to prevent observers from interfering with the weigh-in process. The weigh-in process should be planned out carefully to reduce fish stress and increase survival. The key is to keep fish handling and the time catfish are out of water to an absolute minimum. I do not allow stringers in my tournaments. We feel that they're dead detrimental to the health of the fish. So we uh, require that they use a decoy type bag or preferably a aerated live well in their boat. Weighing containers can be made with a set of plastic laundry baskets with holes drilled in the bottom to equalize weights and allow water to drain. Tournaments should require that contestants use only those baskets provided by the organizer. Use no more than three to five baskets to keep the weigh-in line short. And remember to wet your hands and any surface the fish may come into contact with. I ask all my fishermen that we keep the weigh-in line very short. Um, with the large size of the catfish that we, we catch, it's hard to keep them in water while they're waiting in line. So we keep the line short and move them through fast and get the fish out of the boats, onto the scale, and into the aerated nice. tank in a short, short amount of time. The tournament life support tank performs the same role as a live well in a boat. It must provide proper water temperature, adequate dissolved oxygen, and a 0.5% salt concentration to ensure survival after the tournament is over. If the water temperature is 75 degrees or less, match and maintain that temperature in your tank. This may require the use of ice on a hot day. If the water temperature is above 75 degrees, keep the water in your tank 5 to 10 degrees cooler by adding ice. 
At no time should the water temperature in your tank exceed 85 degrees. Continuous aeration is critical in a tournament tank. An inexpensive way to maintain dissolved oxygen in your tank is to use a high capacity bilge pump attached to four to six spray nozzles above the water line. These nozzles circulate and aerate the water in the tank. Commercial aerators and air compressors are more expensive but may further improve dissolved oxygen levels. A good release site will have relatively cool, clear water with good circulation and oxygen, a hard bottom, and be at least three feet deep at the point of release with deeper water nearby and be located away from boat traffic and ramps. I find it's important to take all the steps that we take because we, we really care about the fish and we want to return them to the water in the best possible condition that we can. We want these fish to survive our tournaments um, and continue to grow and breed. I've got an eight-year-old daughter. I want her to be able to go out someday and catch a 50-pound blue cat. The success of any regulation requiring the release of fish depends upon the survival of those fish. With that in mind, remember the following take-home points. One, select a good weigh-in site in close proximity to both the release site and the parking lot and or boat mooring area. Two, select a good release site with relatively cool, clear, deep water. Three, wet your hands and any other surface the fish may come into contact with. Four, minimize handling steps and the amount of time the fish are exposed to the air. Five, keep weigh-in line short by using only three to five organizer provided weigh-in baskets. And six, provide proper water conditions in the tournament holding tank by using continuous aeration and maintaining recommended temperature and salt levels. The catfish fisheries in Missouri have been a popular destination for anglers, not only for Missouri anglers, but for those anglers in surrounding states. By using proper handling techniques and release techniques to promote live release, we can maintain the quality of those fisheries or even enhance them.